Okay, this is a brief uh, introduction to linear regression uh, for EcoBio. So, one thing that uh, you want to make sure when you're thinking about different types of analyses like the ones that we covered, regression and ANOVA, in ANOVA, this independent axis, the independent variable, is categorical, and the dependent variable is continuous. In linear regression, both your independent and your dependent variables are continuous, so you're basically making a single linear relationship. So, just like with ANOVA, your linear regression is going to use the F statistic. And if you remember, the F statistic is some ratio. It has a numerator and a denominator, and that's what I want to concentrate on in this quick tutorial. So, let's imagine uh, some plot of, of points. Now, I've drawn this so that there is a clear relationship between the two points that's positive. Right now, it doesn't matter what these axes are, so we're just going to call them X and Y. Now, in linear regression, what you're doing is predicting your Y variable based off of your X variable. So this is important. The first thing that you're going to do in a linear regression, or that uh, the computer program will actually do for you, is put a best fit line through the data points. What the best fit line is, is the line that minimizes the distance from each point to the line. But it's not just the distance, as this would be XY distance from each point, it is the distance only on the Y axis. That's because you're predicting Y values based on X. So you're concerned about predicting um, this deviation in this direction. Okay, so that's, that's this first part. So what we have here is a lot of um, points on a predicted line. So there's also another value that we can calculate, which is your average Y value. And we're going to call that value Y bar. So this is the average only in the Y axis of all of the points. So when we're thinking about the, the F statistic, the first thing in the F and I'm going to draw a new graph. First thing about the F that we're going to talk about is the numerator. So F equals this numerator, and we'll redraw a bunch of points. The numerator is actually, here's your Y bar value, the distance from the line to the Y bar average. So it's essentially the slope of the line. So here we have big deviation, big differences between the Y bar and the line. On the other hand, here's another graph. Here's the Y bar this deviation is smaller. This is going to have a lower slope. Now imagine all of these things can be, doesn't matter if the slope is negative or positive, it's the extent or magnitude of the slope. So if we're thinking about this, this F ratio, the F value, the bigger the slope, that is the, the more that the greater the extent of the relationship, the more x affects y, the greater the slope, the higher the f value. So how about the denominator then? So the denominator, here's a new graph, the denominator is about how far each point is from the line. So we can take and measure the distance of every single point to this best fit line. Now imagine this is this is a nice relationship here. The points fit the line quite well. On the other hand, let's draw a graph that's going to have the same slope. Here there's a big distance on average between the points on the line relative to this one. So in this case, we have our f, the slope, is the numerator in this, and we can call this the fit. 
this has a good fit. That is, the distance between each point in a line is small. This has a poor fit. So as fit gets better, this actually decreases. So a good fit has a low number. A low number in the denominator increases the f value. So a high slope increases f value, good fit increases f value. So in, indeed what you want in a predictive relationship is a relationship where one variable has a strong effect on the dependent variable and has good predictive power. So the slope is the magnitude of the, of the relationship between the two variables. The fit is the predictability of the relationship. So in, in both cases, just like in the F statistic when we talk about ANOVA, as F increases, your p-value decreases. And you can look at the, the previous video on uh, hypothesis testing for the relationship between F and P. But basically, in a regression, the null hypothesis is the lack of a slope, that is, the lack of a relationship. Typically, the alternative or biological hypothesis is that there's some relationship, either positive or perhaps a negative relationship. But you are using the term relationship versus no relationship. Now, if we remember that the p-value is the probability that the null hypothesis is true, to be able to reject the null hypothesis, we need a p-value less than 0 0.05. So we want a 5% or less probability that the null hypothesis is true. And to get that, we need an f-value where the slope over the fit produces a high ratio. The high ratio is going to drive the p-value down. Now, as I like to think with, with most statistics, um, regression is, is a very visual type of, of analysis. If you see a relationship between the two variables, typically that relationship is going to be reflected statistically. So a couple things that go into getting a good relationship are good sample size. You're going to trust a relationship that has a higher sample size compared to one with a lower sample size. You're also going to trust a relationship where the, the points fit the, the line very nicely. One last aspect of regression that I want to go over is something called the R squared value. This is the proportion of the variance in your independent variable explained by your dependent variable. So let's take three circumstances. We're going to put the same line in each, and here I'm going to put the points very close line. We've got really great fit, less fit, very little fit. Now the R squared describes the extent of this fit. The R squared value is something that's going to vary between 0 and 1. 0 means 0 variance explained of y by x. So this is going to be approaching 0. A value of 1 would actually mean every point is exactly on the line. 100% of the variance in y is explained by x. Where you get the R squared value from is actually taking the y bar value again. In this case, you are the numerator. This is a ratio again. The R squared value is the, the proportion of the variance that is due to the slope over all of the variance. So the way this looks here's our y bar 
we can just take the distance of each point to the average y value. This is total variance. And this is only the variance in y. We can also then fit a line through these points and then measure the distance between each point, excuse me, the line, I should do this in another color, but this is the slope again. This is the variance that is explained by the line. So r squared is all the variance, and then when you just look at the variance explained by the line, you get the ratio or the proportion of all of the variance that is explained by the line. So r squared again is variance explained by the slope of the line divided by all variance. In English, this translates to the proportion of variance explained by the best fit line. Okay, that is the brief explanation of regression. Maybe someday later we'll talk about nonlinear regression. But that's it for now. Bye bye.